So guys, today I wanted to do a quick video and it's probably going to be mostly for beginning beekeepers. More advanced beekeepers have probably already got this under control. I want to tell y'all what to do if you find yourself in the unfortunate situation of having a mite problem in your bees in the middle of a strong nectar flow. Now of course what we want to do ideally is keep those mites under control before the nectar flow starts so you have healthy bees going into that flow. And of course even before that you need to have healthy bees, mite free bees or low mite numbers going into the winter time so that you have healthy bees coming out of winter into spring so you can get those hives built up into those numbers that you need to have a good strong honey harvest for the year. Well this year, and I'm just going to be perfectly honest, this year I did not do a very good job on my mites. I uh, have not been in the habit of testing for mites, of doing sugar rolls or alcohol washes. I have done it in the past, but I kind of got complacent. I did treat last winter to get my mite numbers down, but I didn't do any tests, and those uh, treatments were not as effective as they should have been. So I'm kind of left right now in the situation of having to do something about a very serious mite problem in the middle of a gangbusters honey flow here in Georgia. So I just want to let everybody know that all is not lost if you get to this point. We're going to tear apart one of these hives, we're going to test it for mites, and I'm going to show you the signs that you need to look for for mite issues during the springtime. And I'm also going to show you how to get rid of your mite problems even in the middle of a strong nectar flow. So one of the signs that you need to look for if you're out at your bees and you glance at the ground in front of your beehives and you see a whole bunch of larvae or what you would call crawlers, which would be live bees just kind of crawling around outside of the hive. You'll have a lot of larva or like I said, live bees crawling around out here. And that's a sign that the bees that are in the hive are dragging out bees that are defective. They're dragging out pupa. They're dragging out larva that is diseased. And they're just dragging out junk that uh, is not gonna be of any benefit to the hive. Now those viruses, although they do occur naturally in beehives, are vectored or spread by the mites. So if you start having these kinds of problems, if you start seeing, if you start seeing the amount of bees like this that are just hanging out on the outside of the hive, if you really start looking at them, you will start noticing that these bees have deformed wings. They have, uh, and they may have other issues as well. But uh, that is one of the biggest things that if you start seeing that, you better start treating for mites because you've already got a serious problem. So first let's look at the equipment that you're going to need to do this. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a sugar roll on these bees. Now this is a reasonably accurate way to check for mite loads and it doesn't kill any bees if you do it properly. First you're going to need a mason jar. Not that one. You're going to need a mason jar whose inside lid has been replaced with number eight hardware cloth. That'll allow the sugar and the mites to fall out, but it'll keep the bees inside. Now this is just a standard mason jar, wide mouth, no big deal. You can buy these commercially with this screen on it. If you have some hardware cloth laying around, you can make you one for free in about three minutes. You're also going to need an amount of just good fine powdered sugar. You're going to need a half of a cup measure and you're going to need a larger container just like this one as well. In addition to that, of course, your standard equipment is going to be your smoker and your hive tool. So let's go ahead and dig into this hive and see what we've got. What I like to do is crack the lid just a little bit, give them a little puff of smoke, <clears throat> and then go ahead and open it. So this top box is just a honey super and the frames have not been drawn out so there's not a lot of activity in it. So we're gonna go ahead and get down into the next box. Give them just a little bit of smoke. And like I said, we are in the middle of a very, very good honey flow here in Georgia or nectar flow, whichever you wanna call it. And it looks like this box might, might be ready to extract. Let's see here. Not quite, actually nowhere near. That box has is, uh, is got a little ways to go. Let's check this frame too. I go into these boxes with all, all intentions of doing one thing and I just get so distracted with everything. All right, so there's nothing useful in this box for us right now. So we are going to go ahead and close it back up and let's get down into the next box. All right, so what you're looking for to do this test is a frame that has eggs or young larvae 
uncapped brood in general would be just fine. And the reason that you're looking for that is those frames ordinarily have nurse bees on them. And those nurse bees are gonna give you the most accurate count of how many mites you have in your hive. So let's pull these frames. Now I split this hive not too long ago, so I don't expect to see a lot of eggs. In fact, it looks like they've been backfilling quite a bit. I don't expect to see a lot of eggs, but hopefully we'll find some, uh, some older brood if nothing else. And uh, if worse comes to worse, we can just, we'll take what we can get. So this looks like a pretty good candidate right here. Uh, this has got some uncapped brood in it still, and it's got a fair amount of bees on it as well. So what you need for this test is a 300 bee sample. So you're gonna get your container and start counting. There's one, there's two, there's, just kidding, there's a better way to do this. So here's a good example of what I'm talking about. This drone brood just fell out of one of the cells and you can see it is very diseased. It has deformed wings and it's dead. It's not gonna make into anything at all. Um, I actually saw a varroa mite crawling right next to it. So yeah, this hive has got, it's got issues and it will most certainly collapse in a couple of months if nothing is done about it. All right, it. so let's get ready to do this test. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need your big container Take your jar with the screen lid on it and get it ready to go. Take your frame. And first of all, you wanna make sure your queen's not on it. Now, I, like I said, I split this hive not too long ago. So there's likely a virgin queen running around here somewhere because I see a lot of queen cells that have been chewed out. So let's make sure we look really hard so we don't miss her because we, we don't wanna rock her around during this test. And I don't see her. Doesn't mean she's not there, but I don't see her. So our next step, we want to get our cup ready as well. Our next step, you just take that frame, shake those bees into that container, knock some down towards the bottom. And ideally you want a half of a cup of bees. I didn't quite get a half of a cup on that, so I'm gonna get just a few more. We're gonna get another frame. We're gonna check that out. Make sure our queen's not on there. And I'm not seeing her. So let's just get a few more. We don't need many. We just need a few. Scoop those up and dump them in your jar. All right. After that, we're gonna take our jar, screw the lid on. We've got we got about a half of a cup sample and that is equal to 300 bees or roughly 300 bees. Go ahead and put those frames back in the hive. I'm gonna keep our hive open at this point because this time of year is, robbing is really not a huge concern because they have got nectar to go after. They're not as likely to rob each other out. So after that, what we want to do is we want to take our container with powdered sugar in it. And really you want to do about a tablespoon of this, roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to coat the bees. You're just going to get all the bees coated really good. Mash that down in there. You're going to get a little bit more, just for good measure. And we'll just Shake that around a little bit, roll it around, get those bees all coated in that sugar. Now we wanna let that sit for about a minute. All right, so it's been about a minute. We've got our jar here. They have been rolling each other around here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find ourselves a white surface. This is just a bucket lid. We're gonna find ourselves a white surface. Alternatively, you can get a pan of water and dump it in there. And the, I have not done that before, but I believe the, all the sugar dissolves and the mites float to the top so you can get a good count. But we're just gonna use this. If the wind's blowing really bad, you might consider something different. This is what we're gonna use today. So you take this jar and you just start shaking them. And I don't have to go any farther than that. I don't really need to violently shake these bees because there are mites all over the place. Let's count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 in that sample right there. And I bet if I 
I bet if I shook it some more I would get more but there's really no point because I know that this hive is thoroughly infested and we have to do something about it now. So now that we've done a mite count and we've determined that we have to treat these bees your only option during a nectar flow and when your honey supers are on is Mite Away Quick Strips. Now this is not an advertisement for Mite Away Quick Strips. They're not paying me anything, but I have used their product before and it works very well, so I do recommend it, especially during a honey flow. This is the only EPA approved option for treatment of mites during a honey flow. Some precautions you have to take with this stuff, of course you have to be aware of where, which way your wind is blowing because if you inhale these vapors, you're gonna have a hard time with your respiratory system. Also, you should wear protective gloves because this is formic acid and it could cause chemical burns on your hands. It comes in these little pails, in these little plastic containers or plastic packages, and it comes in different, uh, different sizes of container as well, of course. This one package will treat a hive that has, a, that has two brood chambers and uh, it's, yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, putting these strips on is pretty simple. You do need some gloves with this. I don't have gloves with me today. So we're just gonna be very careful and make sure we don't touch these things. We are going to dump them on right out of the plastic wrapper and avoid touching it with our hands. Ideally, you should wear some chemical gloves with it because it is an acid and you could get burned with it. We're gonna get some of these bees on the top out of the way. We're gonna scrape some of our comb out of the way as well. Move that out of the way. What you wanna do is you wanna lay it across your brood chambers up here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dump it out like this, use our hive tool to lay it out. And after that, we're gonna use our hive tool to separate these two. When you get done, top of your brood chamber should look like this. After that, all you need to do, put your supers back on. Something else that I like to do personally, and this is just for my own record keeping purposes, I like to write the date that I treat and what I treat with on the bottom of these hives. Oh, I'm sorry, on the bottom of the top cover of the hives. So today's date is 5-3, I believe, of 18. And I used Mite Away Quick Strips or Max, and I used two strips of it. After that, throw your lid on, and there's one more step. Now this is a step you only have to do if you have screened bottom boards. If you have solid bottom boards, you can disregard this step. So what you wanna do is, we're gonna plug this bottom up as best as we can. Those strips are made out of a, well the active ingredient is formic acid. And that formic acid needs to stay in the hive as much as possible. If your hive has screen bottom boards, a lot of that formic is gonna dump out of the bottom and you're not gonna get as much of, uh, efficacy or effectiveness or whatever as you would if you had a solid bottom board. Now I'll link to an article, I believe it's on Randy Oliver's website, of his tests on uh, Mite Away Quick Strips and Formic Acid treatments. That The uh, efficacy doesn't go down that much, but it does go down some, so your best bet is to go ahead and plug up that screen bottom board as best you can. I just use some flashing. Uh, this is very thin aluminum flashing. I cut it to the, uh, to the shape of the screen bottom board in this bottom, and I just stick it in there and after three days you can remove that and you'll be good. So guys, a few other things I want to mention about Mite Away Quick Trips that I didn't mention in the course of this video. You want to make sure that your outside temperatures are between 50 and 85 degrees when you apply this stuff. The label says that if your temperatures are greater than 92 degrees in the first, two, uh, first three days of treatment, that you might experience some excessive brood loss. And you may experience some brood loss anyway, but it's, probably, it's gonna be minimal compared to the amount of brood loss that you would experience if your hive collapsed due to Varroa mites. Um, Mite Away Quick Strips is um, approved for the production of organic honey, even when those supers are on your hives. Formic acid naturally occurs in beehives anyway. The honeybees can handle a certain amount of formic acid, 
but the mites can handle a threshold that is lower than what the honeybees can handle. So what happens is once the formic acid level in the hives hits a certain number because of the quick strips, the mites die off, but the bees are fine. Uh, what's so great about Mighty Way Quick Strips is it's the only treatment that I'm aware of that actually penetrates the cappings on the cells and kills mites inside of the cells, as well as the phoretic mites that are on the bees. Now after you treat them for the first few days, first two or three days, you might see a whole bunch of fanning and your bees might be noisier than normal. That's not, that is normal because those bees are trying to get that formic acid out of their hive because they don't like it very much. There was a time when you had to put a spacer ring in the uh, place on top of the brood chamber that you were treating at to get some space around those strips. You don't have to do that anymore, which makes it really convenient. You can just put those strips on top of the top bars of the frames over the brood chamber and then put your honey super directly on top of it. Now we counted about 17 mites out of that 300 or so bee sample earlier. Now that is way, way, way more than the economic threshold to treat your bees. Now economic threshold does vary from place to place. A good rule of thumb is that if you get three mites for 300 bees, that's probably when you should start treating. Now I'll find an article and link to it that'll give you a more scientific, um, scientific count or scientific opinion of, uh, of your economic threshold, but uh, a good rule of thumb is three, at least in the springtime. In the springtime, if you've got three, especially early in the spring, those numbers are gonna exponentially multiply until you've got an out of control situation on your hands, and that is what has happened to my hives, unfortunately. Now again, this is a case of do as I say and not as I do. You're supposed to wear some good chemical gloves when you're handling this stuff because it is an acid and it could give you some burns on your hands. Um, so don't do what I did today. I did handle it with the packaging and my hive tool for this hive, but uh, you should definitely get some chemical resistant gloves because this is some pretty nasty stuff. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to light your smoker so you can see which way the wind's blowing so you can stay upwind of this stuff because if you inhale it, you're gonna be hacking and gagging because it is some strong, strong stuff. Um, but guys, that's gonna do it for today. I really appreciate you watching and I hope that I hope that y'all learned something from this. I hope I was accurate in what I said. And besides that, I've got bees that are, that are visiting me right now. So uh, we're gonna end this video. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. A few other things I want to mention about Mite Away Quick Strips, if the bees will leave me alone. <laughs>